Now let's move on and see how this equivalent standard axle loads are calculated by an average truck factor rather than a VDF factor. Okay. So let's see how the equivalent standard axle loads can be arrived at by making use of an average truck factor okay, or you call it as a truck factor. Now in this case what is done is the various vehicles for which the axle load survey is carried out will be first grouped into different vehicle classes. Okay, so Like for example, you can have uh, say trucks with a single axle and a tandem axle, trucks with a single axle and a tridem axle like that. You can group them into different vehicle groups. Now for each vehicle group, you can divide them then into different axle loads based on the axle load that is coming in this or axle load spectra of this vehicle group alone. See, as you see in this picture, I have considered like all the identical vehicles as one vehicle group and then you determine the ELF for the various axle load groups of this vehicle group alone and using those ELF values, you can determine what is the equivalent axle loads for the different axles of this vehicle and for each vehicle, you can add them together to get the truck factor for that particular vehicle. Okay. Now you have a truck factor for this vehicle, truck factor for this vehicle and so on. You can then average out the truck factor for all the vehicles in that particular vehicle class to get an average truck factor for that particular vehicle class. So if I see this, see this blue trucks all belong to one vehicle class, you will essentially get a truck factor for that vehicle class. Similarly, if you have another vehicle class, you will get a separate truck factor for that vehicle class. Now this is a method or using this truck factor is what the EAS, uh, the equivalent single axle loads is determined in the case of asphalt institute method of design. Okay. Now, I uh, will just show one example. See, this is one truck uh, with a single axle single wheel at the front and a single axle dual wheel at the rear. Suppose you are surveying or you are conducting an axle load survey of 1000 trucks. Okay. So, first of all, you will measure the axle loads on the front axle as well as the tandem axle or the rear axle on all the thousand trucks. Now then they will be grouped together. The single axles will be first grouped together and as you see that you put it in different axle load bins. So 3000 to 7000 is one, then 7000 to 8000, 8000 to 11000 and so on. So you have divided it into different load groups and you count how many uh, no, axles come uh, under each of these load groups. So, so this essentially is the frequency. Okay. Now for each of them, the load equivalency factor will be determined for the mid value of the load group. Say if you have a uh, 3000 to you know, uh, 4000, 3500 becomes the mid value. For that mid value, you take the load equivalency factor uh, as per the fourth power approach you can use. So, you get the load equivalency factor, then the load equivalency factor multiplied by the frequency of that group will give you the E cells. So, what you are doing is that all the axles that are coming under that load group are now converted to equivalent standard axles. Now, you sum up all this equivalent standard axles together. So, you got a total equivalent standard axles of 229 for the front axle. Likewise, you consider the rear axle which is the tandem axle. So, you have 1000 vehicles. For all 1000 vehicles, you have determined what is the uh, tandem axle load and they are put, the frequency is put in a, a axle load groups like this. So, in kilo pounds, you see that these are the axle load groups under each load group. What is the frequency under each gro load group is determined and for the mid value of each load group, you find out what is the load equivalency factor and multiplied by the load equivalency factor with the number of vehicles on that group will give you the equivalent standard axle loads. Now you have like 1000 vehicles for sum up the e cells for all the 1000 vehicles. So we got a total e cell at the rear axle as 169. So what you have seen is that the front axle has a total of 229 e cells and the rear axle has given at uh, e cells of 169. So you add them together so that you will get what is the total equivalent standard axles due to this class of 1000 vehicles. Okay. Now divide it with 1000, you will get 0.4 as the 0 0.40. So which means that this truck class has a truck factor of 0 0.40. So now if in your traffic stream, there are like you no know, 2000 of this truck uh, coming. So, you can just multiply it with this 0.4 which will convert those 2000 vehicles into equivalent standard axles. So, this is the idea of truck factor. So, what you have done is here is that each 
truck class is given a truck factor. Whereas in the last VDF method, you have seen that all the vehicles put together, you are finding one vehicle damage factor. Okay, so this is one more example which is shown here. You can see that this is one truck type or let me write this T1. This is one truck type. So for the front axle, you see that what is its load and it is converted to it easel multiplying uh, using the multiplication factor of equivalent axle load factor. And for the rear axle, you have determined what is equivalent standard axle. So adding them together divided by 1. If it is only one truck, so divide by 1 will give you the truck factor for this class of truck. Similarly, you can see that this is another class of truck which has which has like you know three axle groups. So for each axle group, you find out what is the equivalent standard axle loads, add them together divided by if there is only one vehicle divided by one will give you the truck factor. So you see that the this uh, the first example that I have shown sorry the example that I have shown there is this truck has a truck factor of 0.4 this truck factor has a uh, the truck truck class has a truck factor of 0.649 and this third sorry and this third truck has a truck factor of 2.39 and so on so for every class of truck you can have separately find the truck factors okay now let's see how to get the total equivalent standard axles or the end design. This is the design traffic. So you have AADTTI multiplied by TFI into 365, then GDL. The multiplied with G, D and L will give you the total easels. Let's see what are these parameters. So the first one is the AADTTI which indicates the initial annual average daily truck traffic for the ith vehicle class. So in the example that I have shown three type of vehicle classes. So suppose uh, one of such is one vehicle class. Okay. So in that example there are three. So likewise you can have the different truck types for each truck drive your uh, truck type you see what is the annual average daily truck traffic okay then for each truck type you have to determine the truck factor right so the truck factor tf for that class is to be multiplied so essentially what you have done is that all those truck tr trucks the number of trucks are converted to equivalent standard axle loads now you have to multiply it with 365 to get the no annual uh, traffic then you multiply it with g which is the growth factor which we have already discussed 1 plus r raised to n minus 1 by r where r is the traffic growth rate for that particular truck type no if you have a separate value for that then you have the directional distribution factor and the lane distribution factor okay so this is how you will get the total easels if you are going for an average truck factor method a quick comparison of this VDF method and a truck factor approach. So unlike this vehicle damage factor approach, in the truck factor method, the growth rate is actually not assumed as an overall average for all the vehicles. Uh, when you are doing the traffic survey, you will be having the classified volume count for each class of truck that is the annual average daily truck traffic I that you have measure, mentioned. Okay, And also you can get the growth factor for each of these classes of vehicles separately. Okay, So in the case of truck factor method, there is a possibility that if the different classes of vehicles have different growth rates, you can use it separately rather than using one growth factor for all the vehicle classes together as in the case of VDF method. Okay, So VDF is essentially an axle type approach wherein you are just com you know, combining the axle types from all the vehicles together whereas the truck factor is essentially a vehicle type approach because each vehicle type is you know, considered separately. So essentially they vary in the matter in manner in which you are actually computing the equivalent axle loads. Fine. Uh, so in both this VDF and TF approaches, they consider the axle load distribution to be uniform and the easel values are estimated for the average load from the each class interval. Now in both these methods, what we have discussed, which is normally followed in the IRC method and in, in the Asphalt Institute design approach, uh, the load is divided or the each axle loads are converted in, into an equivalent single axle loads so that in the design we need to cater only to one parameter which is the end design or easels equivalent standard axle loads okay 
whereas in the ash to mechanistic empirical payment design guide method 2008 or mapdg as you normally call it you can use the entire axle load spectra or the axle distribution factors and different growth rates for the design purpose you don't convert each one of these loads into its equivalent axle loads okay so, or what you can say that the total axle load spectra as it is measured in the field can be utilized for analysis so here the detailed axle load spectra is needed which included the which includes the percentage of total axle load application within each of the load interval for a specific axle type and within each vehicle class and uh, see the uh, the problem with this method is that you need such an extensive data that is to be collected so that you can input it in the uh, for the analysis but if it, that is not available so you have like three hierarchical levels of inputs is measured in a or is mentioned in mapdg so level one utilizes this extensive axle load data which are collected for that particular highway or a similar highway under consideration whereas in the level three uh, you can go for a more approximate method wherein historical data collected or the data that is globally available for identical uh, approaches can also be used in the MAPDG analysis. But the idea is that rather than converting the vehicle loads or the axle loads to some standard axle load, you are estimating what is the damages or the, what is the effect that is caused by the entire axle load spectrum as such on the payment. So, this is just a screenshot of the Ashtoware MAPDG or the Mechanistic Empirical Payment Design Software. Uh, the vehicle configuration uh, page of that. So, you can see here that you can have the vehicle class distribution and its growth rate for different classes of vehicles. As you see here, uh, you have different classes like class 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 11, etc. So, for each of these classes, you can first determine like what is the percentage of uh, vehicles in the total vehicle data. So, you give the annual two-way annual average daily traffic and number of lanes and the total percentage of trucks in that and out of the percentage of trucks, how much percentage is each of these classes. So, this information can be given. And the growth rate that you see here is that you can give different growth rates for each of the classes of vehicles and also the growth function, see you have, you have mentioned here linear, there are different ways in which this growth function can be considered. So, it need not be, the growth of a truck need not be always in a linear fashion, it could follow any, you know, as a, any other trend it can follow. So, accordingly that can be mentioned in the case of a, uh, this MAPDG and also uh, there could be monthly adjustment factors because it need not be uh, no the same um, uh, tra truck traffic they, that may wander or that may you know the, this distribution need not be same through in all the months so you can have monthly distribution also possible and the for each of these class you have to mention like whether it is a you know what is the class of truck with how many axles are there how many single axle tandem axle trident axle etc are there and the other information such as the you know uh, the dual tire spacing the tire pressure the lateral wander if it is there so uh, so all those information that is the direct as such what is the traffic that you see in the load or the traffic axle data that you get uh, you know in the field that can be input in the astroware and what it essentially do is that it will use this information to compute the stresses strains and other deflections which will be you no know, linked to the um, distress transfer functions and this so on a day to day basis you can say this distresses will be computed and the damage will be accumulated and then accordingly the design can be done uh, let me conclude that uh, a quick overview of what we have discussed today. We have seen that uh, the using the ELF factors, you can compute the equal and single axle loads by two approaches. One is the truck factor method and the second one is the average uh, or the vehicle damage factor method and how the equal and single axle loads are determined using this truck factor or using this VDF value is what we have discussed and we have just you know, looked into how the axle load spectra can be as such can be given in an MEPDG software. Okay. Now, uh, we will uh, see some examples. I will use a, a template or a 
you know, I'll use a template on an Excel template and in an Excel template, I'll show how an actual data is processed and how this uh, ESLs or, or the equivalent single axle loads are computed. Mm -hmm.